Welcome to the Daily Update. This is being prepared Monday, October 17th, where we'll look at the action in the market today and then see how things look for Tuesday, October 18th. And we had a pretty nice up day, pretty strong, pretty solid. We saw growth actually lead the way. We saw the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100 lead the way higher. So this is a lot different advance than what we saw last Thursday with the big up day where the NASDAQ didn't participate as much and value outperformed growth. So could something be developing here? We're still above support. We are showing some improvement. We're still negative overall. However, just like we've been seeing before, some things that lo are looking positive could come into play, but we need to see follow through based on price. If we don't see that if the market just turns around on Tuesday and tanks as much as it went up in Monday session, it throws pretty much all the positive things right out the window. So we have to see some more follow through. But we have some things that are positive to look at. And of course, there's a whole list of negative things to look at. So we'll just have to weigh what's going on right now, follow our charts and see where they lead. So what are some things that we can say about Monday? Right at the open, we had a gap higher open. A lot of that was because of what happened in the UK. There was some positive news. They met over the weekend, decided to do some things. The gilt market, which is the bond market in England, they liked that. The British pound liked that. So it really started going up. The dollar started going down. That gave some support over into the US market. The decline in the dollar helped with stocks. We had some earnings that came out that were well-received. So it just set a positive tone for the open. And we saw pretty much all of our gains right at the open. We did gap much higher to above R1. Now remember, Friday's session was pretty wide. So for us to get all the way up to R1, that's pretty significant at 36.70. As the day went on, we did drop down below that. We went just a little bit below R1, but we were able to recover. And then we stayed above R1 for the rest of the day. We were up 2.65% on a slightly above average volume. That's a little bit of a concern to have an up day and not be a really strong volume day. The technicals, as I've been saying, we're still negative. We've got a lot of damage that needs to be repaired, but we are seeing some potential signs, some setups, some scenarios that we've been waiting to see if something will happen. They're starting to show a little bit more life to them right now, but it's ultimately going to come through to what happens with price. As the markets continue with the same fixation of being just really worried about inflation, of course, we're worried about that on a personal level as well, and interest rates, things did seem to improve a little bit in the UK. The Russia-Ukraine situation, that's still pretty tense and could escalate even worse than it already has. And then we might get some Fed speak along the way. So what are some comments? Monday's gains were led by growth and the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100. That's different than what we saw last week. This is what happened in the UK. They have a new finance minister named Hunt. They said those tax measures from this mini budget that we were planning on doing that was freaking out the markets, we're not going to do that now. And this led to a rally in the gilt market and in the British pound. So that really helped the UK market do better. That also helped the EU do better. And uh, then that bled over into the US session. We're still right below the 20 period moving averages. And I have a chart to show you that. We, we need to get through those moving averages. And when I say those, I mean the exponential and simple moving averages. We still have our yield curves that are inverted. And the 10 to the three month, it's getting oh so close to being inverted, but it hasn't slipped that way yet. We're out of the extreme fear camp as far as sentiment is concerned. So it's improving, but we're still fearful. And we just had this one economic report that came out, the Empire State Manufacturing Survey. It was minus 9.1. The last time we had this, it was minus 1.5. Anytime we have a reading below zero, that shows a contraction in the economy. And that pretty much just applies to New York, but that's a big part of the U.S. economy. So we want to 
pay attention to it, but it usually doesn't have a big impact on the market. Our trend is still negative and the ADX is still going up. It's going to take more than just one solid update to move that. And we're still above 20. Because of growth leading the way, <coughs> excuse me, I went ahead and switched the bias over to positive. Last week, when you watched the video and we had that really strong update, I was real leery to change that because we were being led by value in the NASDAQ. It was the Dow that was leading things higher at that time. It just didn't look all that strong. Now, this could work out into weakness as well, but at least this is different at the starting point than what we saw last week. So I switched the bias over to positive, but our momentum is still negative. We're going to have to see consecutive updates to switch our momentum. This is something that I showed in Monday's video, just to let you know, the Mariners are out of the playoffs now, <coughs> excuse me, but the Phillies are still in the playoffs. And this is just some kind of crazy indicator that people come up with sometimes. The last time the Phillies won a World Series, we had some really difficult economic times, 1929, 1930, not real good times, 1980, 2008. These were all severe economic problems in the economy. This is just a coincidence. It's just things that line up and people like to connect them to see if there's something to it. So I'm doing this mainly from a humor standpoint, but it's just kind of interesting nonetheless. Let's go back and talk about the session. We're bumping up into just the fear range right now. Now, if we drop in Tuesday's session, we'll probably go back down into the extreme fear, but we're just at the lower end of the fear side currently. So we're seeing some improvement there. Here's another sentiment indicator, which combines a lot of things together. They have it up a little more, a little higher right now, but still tipping over to the left for the most part. This is suggesting based on these Isabel net charts that if you look at things right now, going forward, they're looking at possibly getting a 6% annual return over the next decade or the next 10 years. That's just what the forecast is for right now. These things change all the time and it just gives folks something to look at, to plan out into the future, realizing that it will need to be adjusted along the way. Here's a chart that is very similar to charts that I show, but just gives you a little bit of a different look of how we dropped down below the 200 week moving average. And that's when this chart was created. Well, we since have been able to come back above that and close it above it even a little bit higher in Monday's session. So, so far this support is holding. This is just showing uh, different bonds, investment grade bonds, that's IG, high yield bonds, those are riskier bonds like junk bonds and emerging market bonds or debt it just shows that people are taking their money out of bonds and it's just been really difficult. You think the stock market has been difficult in 2022. The bond market has been even more difficult. This is looking at seasonality. We're coming into that time of year now leading up to the election where we tend to have favorable seasonality. So here's the black line, the S and P 500. This is the average. Okay. Going back to 1990 and then if you look over on the left-hand side, if you go back to 2009, this is what happened. And it did show some improvement. That's when we kind of started coming up out of the, the real bottom that we set. And then this is 2022, the red line. This is where we're at right now. So we do have some historical favorability right now or tailwinds. Doesn't mean that's what's going to happen, but in times past, this has shown that we are moving into a more favorable season, potentially. Also, the GDP now updated again. The green sick looking line here, this is what they're estimating G GDP will be. And it's getting closer up to about 3%. And then if you look at the consensus, this is what the folks are saying at the top 10 of the consensus range. They're looking at a little bit over 1%. The folks that are quite pessimistic, they actually have this down into negative GDP. This is also looking at core CPI. This is the big one that we look at for inflation. 
And the average has been half a percent month over month in the past three months. It's been five to 6% year over year. Blah, 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 blah. This is just projecting things out, assuming that we don't have any inflation going forward. That's the yellow line. How long is that going to take for us to get back down to 2%, which that's what the Fed's trying to get back to as far as inflation. If we have 0.4% month over month, that's the dark blue line. That would take us a lot longer to get to have inflation start to fall. If we're at 0.2%, that's the light blue line. This is how we see inflation declining. And then we're if you're assuming a core rate of 0.6%, well, we're never really going to get there. So this just projects out the different levels and how these month over month changes do have an impact with how fast inflation will be able to come down in the future if it even comes down. And this really isn't taking into account if it still goes up. The latest reading, and again, these poor folks that are in the Ridex Bear Bull program, and I use these too. I've used Ridex funds for a long time, but they still continue to do the exact wrong thing at the exact wrong time. This is Friday's reading, which is probably after we had that really big down day in Friday and they're just they're dumping back into the bearish funds well then we have this strong up day so in our next chart this will probably come down and so they're they're just ping-ponging back and forth you'd be better off doing the opposite of what your emotions are telling you and that's what I teach a lot in my program is look at the charts don't go with your emotions because they'll They'll be right just enough for you to justify that gut feeling, that intuition that you think you have. But the stock market is a whole different beast. It might work in real life in certain areas. You might have intuition and gut feelings and, and sometimes it works, but most of the time it leads you astray because the stock market is a completely different animal. So we'll just have to see how this is. But one interesting thing is we're really spiking up now with the bearish funds. And we're getting to a pretty extreme reading. So we could start to look at this as a possible contrarian indicator, which has already kind of kicked into gear with Monday's advance. We did have some real strong performance with growth. See how where it was up 3.38% with the large cap versus 1.91. And pretty much across the board, growth outperformed both the mid caps and the small caps. So that was different than what we saw last Thursday. With the decline in the VIX, we saw the up day. So it's really starting to come down, both with the line chart and the bar chart. And we could be working off of a potential spike in the VIX right in here. So fear was getting rather extreme. This is the VIX of the VIX. As the VIX has been coming down, the VIX of the VIX has also been declining on the line chart and on the bar chart. <clears throat> Here's the ulcer index, and I'm switching back over because I don't think this is really being realistic. So I'm looking now again at the weekly chart. This is more where we're at on a fear basis right now. We're not as high as we have been, but we're still pretty fearful overall. We're down 23.67% from the all-time high. And the equity put call ratio did decline with the up day and five period. We're also declining after making this spike. This could be a valid spike that is one of our possible positive scenarios. And I'll have the longer term chart to show you later. Here's the support and resistance level. This is the intraday chart for Tuesday's session. And I've posted this on the YouTube community tab. Here's the daily chart showing we've been able to get back above this support level. Can we keep going from here or are we going to fall back down? So this is encouraging that we regained this support in here. And you can see where volume, it dropped off from Friday session. It was just a little bit above the moving average. This chart still shows we're kind of in no man's land as far as the FIB retracements after breaking down below this 50% level, this is where everything just kicked into gear and pushed us higher. That was on Thursday. Well, then we saw the down day on Friday. We're still coming back up after Monday session. We want to go back and try to recapture some of these other FIB levels, but they're still a ways away 
they're well into the 38s, where we're still in the 36 sevens. This is the important chart that I've really been watching, where we're back above the 200 week moving average. That could be significant. As long as this holds, we still have hope. If we drop down here and close below this level, especially on a Friday, that's when things could really change. And if we come down to this 50% retracement, because this is where everybody kicked into gear and started buying. Well, if we come back down to this level and all that buying starts turning into losing, then you might see an awful lot of selling really accelerate. And we're still down near the underside of our, the midpoint in our channel, but showing some improvement. Our sectors, all 11 sectors were positive, led by discretionary, which has been getting hit, just getting hit really hard in 2022. Staples and energy, which have been doing better, they were up, but they weren't up as much as the other sectors. We still have the energy sector with the highest technical analysis scooter score at 99. Real estate still in single digits. Uh, communication is barely hanging in there at 11.9. And here's the energy sector, which is still looking the best, followed by healthcare. And now utilities are back into third place. And we have the rest of the sectors that continue to be negative. Here is just the update or how the indexes have been performing since the S&P, that's the pink one, hit the all-time high way back in January. We had mostly positive technical alerts, unless you're actually investing in oil and it dropped below 85. But the S&P got back above 3,600. The NASDAQ got above 10.4, 10.5. The Dow was back above 30,000. NASDAQ got above 10.6. So those were pretty positive overall. We have the Dow, which is still in first place. And that's really what led the way last week. And it had a, a decent day on Monday. It's at 69.2, followed by the mid caps, which have been consistently holding up better during this real choppiness we've seen over the last week or two. And then small caps, which are also showing some improvement, and that could be giving some support to the S&P. The S&P is in like fifth place here, fourth or fifth place. It's not doing very well. But it is showing some improvement at 42. And we have the Qs, which this is where the real growth spurt is going to come from. We need to see this really improve. And it was just, it was actually down 0.1 in Monday's session. All right, intraday. We gapped up at R1. We just shot right up to R1 and danced along that. We fell a little bit below it, but then some buying came back in and we just, Stuck along R1 pretty much for the whole session and closed pretty much just a little bit off the high, but we were able to hold on to those gains. Can we see follow through? Our trend is still negative, even though it's declining with the red line, but the green line has not turned up yet. So the ADX is still advancing. So this is still a negative trend that is strengthening. The Arun is still pegged with our oscillator at extreme negative. At some point, that might provide some support to the S&P. Breath still showing a little bit of improvement, but we had a monster up day. We're just seeing a, a lot of you know big up day, big down day, big up day. What's going to happen on Tuesday? Hmm, we'll have to see. Then the advanced decline ratio also, it's still negative, but showing some improvement. New highs, new lows, they're kind of flattening out because we're bouncing around prices where we have been not very long ago. So this is improving a little bit with our five period simple moving average. And it's pretty much flat to slightly higher with our 10 day. Accumulation distribution showing some improvement, but still below a declining moving average. Short term, we might have overdone it. Overdone it. Just like we overdid it on Thursday to the upside. We overdid it on Friday to the downside. Monday, we overdid it to the upside. Is this what sometimes happens in bottoms instead of a, a, a V-shaped bottom like what we saw with the COVID plunge? You see some real violence going on as this base is being established. Is it going to be a base? Are we going to be able to come up out of that base? Or are we just jockeying around before we're getting set to go even lower? 
Then here's the 20 period moving averages where we first want to be able to clear both of these and then close above that as well. Rate of change might have overdone it. And Thursday overdid it to the upside. Friday overdid it to the downside. Monday overdid it to the upside. There's some real tug of war going on right now. The stochastic, or excuse me, the Stoke RSI is starting to already get extreme positive. Williams Percentar is showing some improvement and actually turning more positive. We turn more positive with the force index. Swenland Trading Oscillator, still below this zero line, but showing some improvement. McClellan Oscillator has turned positive, so it's above zero now. That's more positive. Seeing some improvement with our 20, 50, and 200-day moving average study. It's really hard to see this bottom one, but it did bounce up slightly. The short-term stochastic showing improvement and actually positive. Intermediate term, slightly below the midpoint, but is showing improvement, trying to turn up with the longer term, stochastic. And then our 50-day rate of change, we're still extreme negative. We want to eventually come up out of that to generate an official oversold signal. The Sean Trend Meter is coming up after being extreme negative. This is interesting too, our PMO. It's, it has crossed based on price and volume, but it hasn't quite crossed yet with the PMO itself. And sometimes this leads the way and we're seeing a lot of improvement with our oscillators. That could be positive as well. With our PMOs that are rising, starting to get a little extreme positive, but this could still go higher. We're back to looking more positive with the buy signals and we're still flat with those percent of PMOs in the S&P that are above zero. The chicken oscillator is turning back up and showing improvement. The chicken money flow, that is still declining. That's negative. We're seeing kind of a drop off in volume right now. We were just barely above average currently. And you have a lot of folks that are pretty indecisive right now. This is also showing some improvement, although it's still negative. The red line is declining in the vortex. The green line is advancing. If they cross, that would turn this to a positive signal. The summation index based on price, it might be a little hard to see, but it, because the McClellan oscillator was positive, that turns this indicator up. And we were led by that by a couple of days with the summation index based on volume. So this could be leading us to suggest that price may go higher. But we have to see it ultimately in price action. Our slope continues to be positive. It's been all confused lately. The MACD is crossed back over, positive. The KST is trying to turn positive. The TRIX still pretty much flat, but trying to cross over. The PMO getting close to crossing over and our TSI is turning back slightly above the moving average. So we're seeing a lot of improvement with the oscillators that we weren't seeing after last Thursday. The BPI also showing some improvement, but just a real small bar here. It'll turn a lot more positive if we can get back and get above 30. Ease of movement showing some improvement. Ultimate oscillator, still negative, but improving. Money flow index is also showing improvement. Boom indicator starting to come back up when you compare it to the 50 period moving average. So if we stay above this in Tuesday's session, I probably won't show this chart, but just shows how we're bouncing after giving an extreme negative reading. And we're showing some improvement when compared to the 200 day moving average. The TTM squeeze, it, it's been really confused and kind of going in the wrong direction. Well, it seems to be picking up a little bit more and looking more positive currently and going more in line with what we're seeing. Balance of power showing some improvement and right on the dashed line. This also has been a little confusing. It generated a sell signal, then it generated a buy signal. It's just chopping around all over right now. And it just shows, if you look at the bars in here, how we've been just more like a ping pong match than any kind of a trend being developed. With our other charts, the Heiken Ashi is showing some improvement with open candles. We're still negative with the Kegi chart, but the red line is going up. Renko is still negative. The three line break showing improvement. No new signal with the point and figure chart, but we added some X's after Thursday's session. 
but there hasn't been anything definitive really triggered on this chart. We're back to positive with the S&P 500 and the Elder Impulse System and with the SPY. We're still negative with the SAR. The dots are still on top. Another confirmation would be if we see follow through upside movement and then the dots going below. If we don't see that, then these dots will stay above. We're back to more of a neutral with our go no go system. Instead of being dark or deep purple, we're more to a pale purple. Longer term, showing some improvement with our 50, 150 and 200 day moving average studies. And this longer term, we're still trying to turn back up on our 200-day rate of change. Special K, kind of starting to turn up a little bit, getting down to this extreme negative reading, but it's still a long way from the moving average, and it'll take a long time for that to change. The diamonds are back to positive, and the Dow was able to regain the pivot point, so that's more positive action. The Qs are neutral currently, and they still have a ways to go to get to the pivot point, but we need to see some real strength in the Qs and the NASDAQ to really help this market go higher. If that doesn't happen, the market's really going to struggle. With the update, the Vixen declined on the bar chart and on the line chart. The NASDAQ also needs to see more than what it's already shown us, even though it outperformed at 3.43% with this tiny little bar we need to see some real pickup going to the upside if things are going to improve. The mid caps are right back to the midpoint here, right on the pivot point. And the Wilshire also needs to show a little more follow through, get up to this pivot point and see if we can break through that. Dow theory showing some improvement with the Dow itself, not seeing as much strength here with the trannies, but they were up. And we're seeing a little bit of a bounce after utilities have just been getting hit really hard lately. Broad market, the dollar, because we had the update in stocks, the dollar was down 1.14%, but we're still in an overall uptrend. And the S&P to the dollar, they have a really strong inverse relationship. They're going in opposite directions now. Gold was up slightly, but still in an overall downtrend. Silver was up a little bit more, but it continues to be in a downtrend. Oil dropped, and we're at 84.53. The correlation between the S&P and oil, we're still in neutral, but this is dropping. It could get to the point where they start to move in opposite directions. But right now, they're neutral. Looking at bonds, saw them up slightly, about almost a quarter of a percent with the bond ETF. And we were up almost half a percent with the uh, world bond index. And we want to see some follow through with this. Our yield curves, nothing has really changed here. The 10 to the 5 is inverted. The 30 to the 5 is inverted. The 10 to the 2 is inverted. And we're getting a little closer down to this point where it's 0, 05 currently. Is this going to go inverted? If it does, this is what a lot of economists, including Edward Yardeni, somebody that I respect, he is until this goes inverted, he's not into the full blown recession camp. But if that does go inverted, you're going to have a real shift in how some folks are viewing things. The 10 year treasury yield, it's still continuing to go up. We're up over 4%. The 30 year yield is also up over 4%. Even though the two year it declined, it's still giving the best yield overall. Looking at some correlations, stocks and bonds still having a pretty strong tendency to go in the same direction. As I stated before, what would really help the stock market is to see bond prices go up. That would push interest rates down and then stocks going up, possibly the dollar falling more because it's been providing headwinds. If we can get all of those things to click and move. That could really help the S&P 500. The S&P to the two-year also having a tendency to go pretty much in opposite directions currently. And the S&P to the 10 year also going in general opposite directions. Tech to the 10 year also opposite directions. Our scenarios were still working off of this extreme reading, but we did see some improvement based on price and volume. Can we see follow through? Can this line 
both of these lines continue to go up. The percent of stocks above their 200-day moving average did tick up a little bit. Since this is a 200-day simple moving average, it takes longer for this chart to move. But looking at the 50 period, we saw some improvement with the S&P, with the mid caps, and with the small caps. We want to see all of these moving in tandem with each other if we're going to use this as a possible pos positive scenario. The 10-day average of the highs, lows, it didn't budge. It's going to take a while. If you remember how flat the high and low reading was for Monday's session, it really hasn't changed this that much and really hasn't really changed our broad look at the five period of highs and lows. This is what we're still working off of. Here's this spike in the equity put call ratio. It's been declining. And sometimes that gives support to the S&P, but we need to see follow through with price. Small caps were able to get back above the daily pivot. And here's the ratio, even though they underperformed slightly, we're still seeing a little bit of a spike here in the red chart, which may give some support to the blue chart, which is the S&P. Our sector rotation showing some improvement, but they've got a lot of damage that they need to get back in shape. We're seeing a little bit of a turn up with the Q to S&P ratio, discretionary to the S&P, large cap growth to large cap value. We want to see those get above the moving average. And then our large, mid, and small caps also turning up slightly, but we want to see more follow through with this. This is what's been giving us some hope in that as this ratio between the S&P and utilities, utilities have been underperforming, so the S&P is going up. This might mark some kind of a bottom in the S&P, just like when we topped out. When this tops out and starts going down, that might mark a top in the S&P. Well, this has been holding up fairly well recently. And if we can see this continue to climb and then see that confirmed by price going up, this would be a more valid signal or setup for us. This is not really valid right now because interest rates keep going up and we don't know if we spiked out yet here. The staples are up, but not as much as the S&P. So we look at our ratio after spiking up, it has been declining a little bit. We want to keep an eye on this. The best thing for stocks to go up would be for this ratio to, to continue to decline. The copy curve, we're still working off of a signal here. It doesn't tell us the direction, but it looks like it could be setting up that if we go higher, it would like that. The Pring bottom fissure, this does pick direction where we were pretty extreme negative we still have this as a signal. We don't want to let too much time pass because once this signal is generated and you have a whole lot of days going by, it's like that signals further and farther in the past. And even though it's still on the books, so to speak, we it, it doesn't seem to be as valid. So what's our outlook for Tuesday? We're still negative, but we're still at support and just a little bit above support. And we're showing some improvement. We have industrial production and capacity utilization coming out in Tuesday's session and the weekly NAHB housing market index, the whole geopolitical spectrum, uh, what's going on in the UK, things between Russia, Ukraine. They're still doing more of the, not really lockdowns in China, but there's they're being really aggressive in China because they're still discovering COVID cases there. And then, as I always say, any one of these other things, or even something that's not on here, could happen and quickly come to the forefront. So our scenarios, we're still down. We haven't, we're seeing improvement, but not enough to turn us positive yet because of all these different headwinds. They're negative, but we're above support and showing some improvement, but we haven't turned positive, so we can't go with that scenario we need to see follow through, not just chopping around. One strong up day, another strong down day, only to end up really going nowhere. And we're not really sideways right now. It might feel that way because we're bouncing around like a ping pong. But these moves are so strong, the ADX is still picking that up. And it continues to strengthen and is above 20 with the red line still on top, even though that red line is starting to come down. Excuse me. Starting to come down. So our conclusion, the S&P, it may be improving. How's that for nice and decisive? 
It could be. But if we have a down day and selling really gets going to the downside, any improvements made in Monday's session could be wiped out. If we have an up day, and incidentally, right before I started recording, the futures were up about half a percent, but this is many, many hours before the market opens and lots of things can happen. But if we see follow through upside action, that's just going to improve the technical picture and possibly give us some confirmation that things could be improving. Short term, we're above support, maybe improving. Intermediate term, we're still looking to improve there. Longer term, we're still below the 200-day moving average. So thank you. Have a wonderful Tuesday. And I hope your team wins if you're following the baseball playoffs. I don't know if they're going to be able to play that last game ever in, was it New York and Cleveland? It keeps getting rained out all the time. So I will prepare the next video after Tuesday's session.